artificial intelligence. There is no doubt that it will change industries, realities, and the way we do everything. And then I can tell it, okay, I want a photo of this model in this location. And it could use AI to determine, okay, it was shot on this lens, on this camera, whatever. That would be cool. The AI will definitely go through everyone's faces and make sure that their eyes are open. I might want the eyes closed. This video looks at how artificial intelligence will affect one artistic realm, photography. We've all seen it. A favorite influencer or close friend posts an AI-generated profile pic, the likes of which you have never seen. What amazes you is that they say all they did was upload a couple of images of themselves at different angles and an artificial intelligence machine generated numerous original versions of their face. What's behind this magic? How is this possible? Such an amazing result for so little effort. Well, it has to do with a concept called machine learning. This machine learning will not only affect how images are created, but will completely redefine the lives of those creating those images, photographers. This story starts quite a while back, all the way back more than 60 years ago, when the image of this baby would change photography forever. Through the use of a rotating drum scanner, Russell Kirsch and his team at the MBS were able to create a 176 by 176 pixel digital image scan of Russell's son Walden. By creating a digital representation of an image, the limits of developing chemicals, photographic paper and dark rooms would later be a thing of the past. A photo was now a string of zeros and ones representing colors, shades, and hues that could be manipulated by algorithms, programs, and processors. The sky was the limit. Fast forward to 1987, when Thomas and John Knoll would develop a photo processing software called Display. And in 1988, after renaming the software Photoshop, sold it to a small startup called Adobe Systems. So Photoshop developed into this very powerful software, but with all powerful software comes intricacy, lots of it. And so I just want to show you a little edit so you can see what sort of decisions happen when a photographer is editing a photo. Right here, I have a photo of a beautiful mural in the streets of Montreal. Let's say I just want to take this photo and instead of keep it in color, I say I want it in black and white. I can make it black and white by just adding a black and white adjustment layer. Maybe I want more contrast in this photo. I can take the photo, play with it a bit this way with contrast and brightness. Really quick, I'm just gonna show you a little something else. For example, I wanna put an effect on here. I can go into my blur gallery and pick iris blur. Make the photo blurry on the sides, but nice and sharp in the middle to draw attention to the middle of the photo like this. I just showed you guys a teeny, 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 tiny bit of what the software can do. But what these new artificial intelligence machines do is tell you, you know what, that in between, you don't have to deal with it. You just tell the artificial intelligence software what the result that you want is, and it will take care of the rest. Photoshop always had to wait for a command from a human being with insight. But today, computers can take an unbelievable amount of data and computer power and develop that insight needed. New photo AI technologies can even look at every single past action taken to correct, enhance, fix, and adjust a photo and deduct what needs to be done next to get the result it's learned. Results here is the key word because what most of us are concerned with is getting a desired accurate result. And if you look at some of the AI based software that is out there, you're going to realize the language is always result based. Mid journey and its discord based iterations can create an image from any text prompt. Luminar and its AI editing bundles can do mundane photo edits and make stunningly attractive photos. Profile Picture, PFP Maker, and Magic Studio offer a whole panoply of profile pic styles based on an upload of numerous photos. 
Aftershoot and Xire are two softwares that actually organize your photos and decide which ones are best to keep. One of the most impressive AI image processors comes from an AI imaging solution called Runway ML. Runway ML promises the ability to generate, expand, re-image, erase unwanted objects in photo and video, create lossless slow motion, and even make static images move. All of these chores were extremely labor and education intensive before AI. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. While I was researching this video, more solutions came out by the day. Like and subscribe, everyone. AI in 2023 does the in-between and the what's next with more and more style and pizzazz, but it's not perfect. I talked to certain photographers that were really embracing artificial intelligence and they're not using it for everything and you'd be surprised what they're using it for. So I don't know if you've heard of Aftershoot, uh, Imagine AI, and just like ChatGPT also for the emailing and things like that. I've played around with all of those a little bit, and some of them I've implemented fully in my workflow. Pam Kay is a Montreal-based commercial and wedding photographer who has embraced AI. But what's surprising is how. I use a lot of AI more for the back end, like the workflow part of things. If, if you're a wedding photographer, sometimes you could shoot mm, four to 6,000 photos in a day, and culling through that takes a lot of time. So after shoot definitely like reduces that. The thing is I don't fully trust it 100% because it's not perfect, but it does kind of accelerate the process. And I've tried to run the AI on the photos. They don't always understand the stylistic choices that we make. Um, so I feel like, you know, for wedding photography, it's important for group photos that everyone's eyes are open, you know, and for example, the AI will definitely go through everyone's faces and make sure that their eyes are open. But, you know, for a photo shoot in a studio, I might want the eyes closed, you know, and it's, it's little things like that. So, yeah, it's easier to use it in one industry than the other. Here is where AI kind of fumbles right now. Remember that all decisions are made based on past innovations and ideas. Past ideas are an excellent way to base your next decision, but not the only way. Innovation does not come from always reusing past ideas and decisions. All those at the mercy of these bots will have to live with how the bot makes decisions. This is fine for exact fields like engineering, but might fall short for more artistic endeavors. Emulating intelligence is not an easy task. For now, Photoshop is okay. What will change is the way we use Photoshop and what will be expected from the software. Consumers will expect all the mundane elements to be taken away from the workflow. There might even be the need for a more fluid interface. You must understand that Photoshop is not just going to hang around and sit there. We already see it with the implementation of neutral filters and camera raw filter as well. However, one cannot underestimate that so-called next step will become more and more sophisticated as data sets become larger and larger and the computational ability to make sense of the data expands. Kyle Benjamin Turner is a commercial and glamour photographer out of Toronto. He talks about his wishes for AI in the future. I feel like uh, an area that we could be going with AI is for example, hey, I wanna do a photo shoot in a studio with this kind of setup, this kind of lighting, even give the AI like a couple of images and it'll tell me, go to this studio in Toronto, get this kind of out. Like if it could tell me all that stuff, that's eliminating like so much work that I would have to do. So that's not specifically photography, but like in terms of scheduling and things like that, I think that'd be a really good place. I would definitely jump on that right away. But when I asked him about certain softwares out there that are generative, like Midjourney, I don't know how it could help me on an actual photo shoot taking the photo. I feel like it more so comes down to if it could create certain things. So for example, if AI could scan a certain model's face at a modeling agency, and then I could tell it, okay, I want a photo of this model in this location, and it could use AI to determine, okay, it was shot on this lens, on this camera, whatever, that would be cool, right? I would need to do that much work at that point. You know what I mean? If, if I could just scan a, uh, like a product, like a shampoo bottle for one of my clients or something, 
and then say, hey, look, just create like a thousand different variations, even a model holding it or a model, for example, um, you know, like downtown in the city holding this like water bottle or whatever it would be. Like if, if I it could get to that point, that's where it would be like, okay, photographers don't really, st photographers don't stand a chance anymore. What Kyle just explained is a scary reality for all photographers. It isn't here yet, but I do believe it is coming in the near future. I am rarely speechless. I don't know what to make of this. This is going to impact every product across every company. And, and so that's why I think it's a, a very, very profound technology. And so we are just in early days. Every product in every company. That's right. What are your thoughts? Do you think photography is dead? Do you think Photoshop is dead? Leave your comments. Like, share, subscribe, and don't forget everybody, keep on making something from nothing.